And welcome back here, ladies and gentlemen, to the last match of the night here for some college Call of Duty. Of now, of course, my name Vision is joined with Shift as we are getting ready to jump in towards the match. The last match was very exciting. This one, hoping it's going to be similar as Grossmont up against Grand Canyon here for our last match of the night here, Shift. Yeah, the first map, like we mentioned, as we were kind of swapping, they started, they were kind of on a little bit of a deadline. So they started their first map before we were ready to jump fully in. 250 to 114 was the score, though, favoring Grossmont Community College. This is a team that, again, in the standings, is looking pretty solid out west. One of the contenders potentially out there at 1-0 so far. Grand Canyon splitting the difference in their first games as they had to unfortunately play against that Texas a and Maroon squad early up in their season. So they are sitting at 1-1. One one. But for all intents and purposes, we expect this series to be pretty close between these two teams. And going into the Gunrunner or Triple Dose of Gunrunner, actually, we'll have that for the Sorge to destroy the Domination and, if we need it, the Hard Point before we get to a potential Map 5, which would be on Ramaza. That's right. And jumping into Gunrunner, we've seen a lot of it. Got to see it on the very first series today that I got to cast, uh, cast with uh, proper there. But of course, now we're jumping into this one. We're going to take a look at the rosters, of course, for GCU. We got Fnatic. We got Dubstep Waffles. We got Show Me Bush. We got Ritual. And we got Zephos. And for GCU, this is a little bit of a newer roster for these guys. You know, going from season zero to season one, a lot of people were looking at Grand Canyon in the Lopes thinking that, hey, that could very well be a good team out west. This one, a little bit different. Fnatic is the player that I have my eye on to potentially come through with some veteranship. But for Grossmont College, oh boy, this is a roster that you love to see. Marvin and Pasta leading this team up. You also got King Mikey, Just Jokester, and Brian. The last of those three, I believe, are newer to this team, but have played very, very well so far in their early season. Again, it was just one game that they played, but they've looked relatively good all the way across every single map mode combination that they've had a chance to play. And I'm very excited to see if this is a five-man roster that could potentially switch things up, maybe even surprise some squads out west. That's right. This West Division, of course, a very exciting one. Lots of fantastic teams to, to really look out for for as far as what we have. You know, UT Dallas, Utah currently sitting at the top here. So there is a lot of fierce competitors that you do have to kind of battle through as uh, we'll go throughout the season. Uh, but, of course, week two, already having the 1-0 lead right now for GCC. you got to be sitting pretty happy, pretty good going in towards Search and Destroy, carrying a bit of this momentum. But we see a lot of Search and Destroy on Gunrunner. We know how it's played. Typically, when you get your submachine gun players in a comfortable position uh, becomes very easy to start taking bomb sites especially on those offensive rounds attacking the most favorable one over towards the right side of the map here getting that crate control is something that every team has essentially been able to master for the most part for as far as trying to lay down those setups but gunrunner just all around a map that we see so much and one that i think the competitive community loves to play and also one i love to cast over yeah, and you mentioned it. The SMG presence that you're looking for is going to be over towards that mid-map. Can you find a way to influence maybe a swing towards the A site? Or if you're defensively minded and you get some pressure towards those boilers, maybe you can hit a flank. It'll be GCU and the Antelopes working their way on the offense first over towards this B bomb site. And it will be initially Xyphos working his way and finding one kill and a second. And I don't really know what happened there for Kmar, but he never responded to Kinger going down from behind him. So what was initially a first blood for Grossman has all of a sudden turned into some good pressure at the B-bomb side for the side of GCU. Yeah, bomb is down. We have actually have a sniper here from just Joker. I don't know how much work he's going to get done now that the bomb has been planted and he's going to have to try and make the attack and Pasta able to grab Fnatic here. And that's going to result in him looking for another push out. The smoke was utilized and now he is regrouped with his teammate to try and go for the retake. Remember, is close, but the trades are there. Another one, four kills on the rounds already for round number one. Brian now in a 1v1 against Ritual. As you'll have to see if he can play out the clock. Is he going to be able to get on towards this bomb site? He's going to spot him. He knows where he is, but it can be very easy for this member just to play the clock here. He knows it, so he's going to try and chase the kill. Brian now behind him as he looks to finish it off here. But round number one over towards the side of GCU as they're able to play a very clean setup in a big round there for Ziffo. was able to grab himself four quick kills. You gotta love the pressure from the SMG line of GCU, though, just to push oh, through yeah. that smoke and make a play on the backside of the crates, shaking up that Grossmont defense pretty considerably. So as we jump into the second round, Grossmont will be the ones looking to battle back on their offensive hit. But like you mentioned, Zyphos with four kills, looking absolutely nasty for GCU Esports, holding down that area outside the B-bomb site, able to really essentially secure an easy round win for GCU in the Lopes. 
Now sniper gameplay though for just jokes are looking his way over from this top railing pipe area. Right on top of the B bomb site. Trades happening just beyond the crates. Kinger looking to make his way potentially also through, but this is not really the weapon that you want in this area. This M4 with an optic on it, he's really going to have to hold this hard scope angle and hope he gets uh, some favorite timing. And Jokester right above him will find a kill through the bathrooms by the looks of it because he'll find a response. And now it's the numbers for the side of Gross Pond. Only two members left as that is going to be Ritual able to take down Kinger. But the trade is there from Impasta. He's been able to find a lot of these trades. Coming up from that round number one into round number two. And now left all alone on top of crates is going to be this man. Jumps out and challenges, but Brian shuts him down very easily. And so far, offensive rounds going the way of both of these teams in the starting two. We got to see the push come through here, but it was just realistically so difficult to come in with the retake after you've already dropped and lost so many members. Yeah, that's the big storyline that, you know, I think is becoming a pretty much uh, nonsensical statement for most because it's just so common sense is that this B-bomb site by where it's positioned, it gives a natural advantage to the offense. So once you find a way to get to that bomb site, and even better if you get past it, it becomes so difficult for the defense to swing. Very regularly for retakes, we try to see people hit the mid-map or try to hit the long flank through Cole. We've seen very little of that here thus far as I believe Zynikos knows that there's a player pushing through. Not able to get the kill though. So with the nice little bit of a little sentry over the top of what looks to be Jokester pushing through the oil side of Woods. This is a big opportunity for Grosspont to swing the map in their favor, even though they don't have the numbers. That's until Ritual and Fnatic are able to find kills on the back end of that crate area once again. And now GCU with numbers, they'll secure the round. 2-1 goes the score after a very uncharacteristic round was kind of thrown together there from Grossmont. Absolutely able to just come together, find these kills, and finally see it in the final kill cam there. Ritual just picks him off the crate, just forced to overextend, trying to find a couple picks to try and clutch that round up, but very difficult to do so. So following through with the trends so far with uh, the offense, as we're going to be jumping back over to Grossmont to see exactly how they want to approach this next round, very likely. It will be back over towards the B side here for us, but we're starting to see things change up a bit. Not changing so much for Joker, as he's going to continue to to keep the sniper out only sitting at one kill right now but just having the threat of it might kind of keep gcu esports in the dark and maybe makes them not want to peek as much but smokes have been used bomb is going down marv's gonna take some shots gets hit through the bomb so now this should be communicated from fanatic but he is traded out and impasta also finds himself one as we just lose a few more this is chaos for both teams. Like, I'm trying to find a way yeah. to sum up how these rounds have gone, but it's just a lot of individuals challenging into other individuals. This is not necessarily a lack of cohesion from either team. It's just the timing of it has been a little bit scrappy. And now Impasta pushing through the crates that will actually take care of two, looking for a third. Waffles will eventually find the trade, but this is a 1v3 situation that he has to clutch up. And the bomb has been planted. Shots on O'Brien are decent, but the drop shot too strong. 2-2 two, two the score as Grossbond secures another offense. That's right. And it's going to be, you know, pretty clear that whoever takes his first defensive round here is, is going to have a little bit of a competitive edge in our search and destroy on Gunrunner. Uh, some shots come through from Brian, finishes off that last kill, a crucial one as if he got picked. Could have been a, a very clutchable round there for the man on your screen that was stuck in that situation. But now just taking a look through this number round number five as we jump in towards it here. Just taking a look at the scoreboard here. Already two players, six kills for Grossmont here. Kinger and Impasta looking to continue to get that work done as some early grenades are being thrown to see if they can catch some of these members that might overextend. Dubstep Waffles lands some shot in the middle in the middle of the map there as that member just tries to get himself into boiler. But now Fnatic and Pasta, Jokester dro just dropping kills when one kill drops ship. The rest of them follow fairly yeah. quickly. It's again, that's the chaos of it all. It just looks like both teams really are contesting this mid map. Grossmont now two rounds in a row defensively have tried to get Woods control. The first time it doesn't pay off. This time it absolutely does. But you have to be a little bit more careful what might be able to come through mid map. If Fnatic, Waffles, and Ritual can find a kill on this player sitting just outside green, it would be massive for them. But Jokester and Kingster finding two in response. Grossmont is going to swarm on the Fnatic. He's got really no chance at all. He will get back into this back warehouse, but again, this is a six and a half or six minutes that would have been, would have been six minutes, 65 seconds worth of him having to play his life out. I don't know where my time has gone off to, but Grossbutt will take a very aggressive defensive round. Uh, again, it didn't pay off for them last time, this time looking much more clean for him. 
That's right. Well, with the way these rounds have been going, maybe the search and destroy will only be six minutes for a shift as uh, they just are, are fairly quickly bouncing back and forth here. Like I said, at the start of the round, as soon as someone just finds that kill, someone shoots, everyone just instantly locks on, smells blood in the water, and then just starts chasing the next one. So it is going to be now 3-2. For Grossmont, is they're able to finally take that defensive round here. The first team to actually do it so far in map number two. Just jokes, they're able to find that kill on towards dubstep waffles for the opening kill. But the trades again back and forth as as we're down to just a, a 2v1 here. And well, that's gonna do it. Grossmont is just gonna clean up a round in about 30 seconds and go up by two rounds. Visions, I'm about to stop just casting this match yeah. and just let the action speak for itself because no it's just, I mean, again, at a certain point, you look at what's happening on your screen and you say, will one of you guys just get set up once? <laughs> like, it's just so scrappy back and forth. And we have not seen the traditional, let's wait for our dead silence. Let's hit for this together. Let's make sure that our offense is actually hitting a bomb site properly. It's just, let's run at each other and see what happens. And uh, so far, Grossman has found themselves a narrow edge. And again, the last two defenses that they've put together have been aggressive through the B side of the map. This is not the case. And maybe they've completely baited GCU, who are now looking to maybe make a play over towards A. And Pasta will be snuck out as he's coming back through the water. Easy trade there, no problem. Kinger will find one in response. But now there are numbers for GCU. That's until Jokester works his way through mid-boiler and finds the bomb carrier. So now as long as Grossman can come back together... They should know that everything is safe. There's nobody at A and there's nobody at B. Let's just get ourselves set up and make this 2v2 a little bit more organized. Certainly the case. Minute 15 in the round. I think maybe the deepest we've gotten into a round here it's this far in towards our gunrunner. Richard will playing the left side of the map right now. Could look to make an aggressive play, but very split right now. It's pretty much the whole side of GCU, so they're playing very much selfish at the moment, just trying to find a pick so that they can maybe try and regroup. But that member is watching the back. You know, he is going to be waiting for that kill, and Jokes is just going to play very patient here as it's just going to be now up to one. All their members were picked off, and Kinger and just Jokester here trying to work together, both already having a pretty strong game, sitting on nine and seven yeah. kills. 40 seconds to work with bomb is down he's gonna have to try and get this bomb planted with both of these members here lurking through the middle of the map cutting it off the response oh information's good for bush and now you immediately just rotate back to the a bomb site pick up this bomb get it planted if you're being smart here but again this very very patient 25 seconds bush is going to go top ac and the timing of this is going to be really really crucial could potentially decide the round bush will work his way back over to the bomb very well done grossman just watching over the top Exactly what you want to see. 5-2 the score as Grossbound were able to take three straight. Three straight rounds as they finally get things figured out. Kinger takes down the last one here for us. He's just holding that bomb site. It was a little bit of a difficult situation there for Bush to be able to get onto just to get to the bomb there. Pinned down, tried to get some work done. But now jumping in towards this defensive round here, GCU yet to actually close out a defensive round. So if it's a time to do it, it's obviously now as it is match point. And we'll see exactly what the approach is going to be. It looks like it's going to be just favoring the same bomb site. And of course, if it's not broken, why fix it? I'm also looking to see what happens here for GCU. They're sending one player through Cole very, very slowly. And if they can win this boiler room, it would be massive. Xyphos finds that player. That was Jokeser in the mid. Fnatic is also here. So now a lot of mid-map pressure here for GCU. Bomb has been planted, though. So the flight that's occurring on the backside, I believe that's Fnatic who's making it happen. He needs to move quickly. He finds one. Will keep his life and just make sure that Grossman just never feels comfortable in the back. Another pick for Xyphos will once again put GCU in a favorable spot. It just comes down to finding where the last two players are and making sure you can hop the bomb with plenty of time. There is one kill. And Pasta, the last player left alive for Grossman, he's got a 1v3. Bomb is not being defused yet. Ritual will hop in and Pasta will find the second of the three oh! kills. And he'll convert the three. What a clutch for Pasta. The 1v3 and Grossmont win the map 6-2. Oh, I really thought GCU had come together. They were team shooting. It looked so good. But this member pushes into green and then leaves this member all alone on the bomb site, but a beautiful play right there from Impasta to close out that map number two there for us. And man, oh man, that's going to put them up to open the series here, Ship. And again, the scoreline will read pretty emphatically in favor of this Grossmont squad. 
but those handful of rounds there, really from round one all the way to about round five or six, it was just scrappy gun battles. And it just turned out to who turned out on top, who won the 1v1s. And then eventually Grossmont was starting to figure out exactly how GCU wanted to play and put a lot of extra attention to make sure that wherever they wanted to go, we need to make sure we need to get some pressure in the middle of the map. Let that be our favor. Let us swing around that if we need to. And they eventually turned into a handful of rounds in a row. I think it was actually four or five rounds straight there by yep. the end of things uh, when everything is said and done. So GCU uh, in a very tough spot here going down two maps early. Now you got to stay on Gunrunner, but go to a domination. We didn't get a chance to watch that hard point though, uh, Austin. So I'm interested to see if what were the biggest issues there and will they be able to get some SMG gameplay coming in to make this gun runner and maybe more into their favor? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it would have been really, really nice to see that Petrograd because I feel like there's a lot of teams right now that have been able to master that map and Absolutely. almost just, just pretty much force a veto out, if anything, um, in, in, in that map into regards of it. So it is hard to say how it did end up playing out. I think it does take a lot of mastery to, to come down to learning the spawns and playing things out. But gun runner for the next two, if it even goes towards the one on towards the hard point there uh but the domination here i think we have gotten to now cast a ton of it it's very similar to hack in the yard where it seems like things with domination after the changes you can play the neutralize and then run and hide and and buy time uh for the team you know to come back and try to find this member that just neutralized things so it actually creates a little bit of a a very chaotic atmosphere um especially within the comms you know within just trying to track players and that is actually the main thing it's it's tracking players within domination realizing who's up who's on the map you haven't seen this player in x amount of time well you need to make sure that you're playing that much more cautious right. going back to their flag there's a lot of extra things that are now implemented just due to those changes that uh, were updated there by infinity ward the thing about domination i know a lot of people still don't care for it but my biggest problem initially with domination was that there was never a decision that had to be made you, you want right. to play for the favorite side of the map and capture two flags period that was how you won domination before this patch now that you've got neutralization in effect you have a lot more ability as that kind of solo player to influence the game in multiple ways. Do we do. go just for neutralization and try to find ourselves into a favorite spot of the map? Or do we go for that full capture to maybe influence our spawns on a negative footing? How many times have we seen on Hackney Yard specifically where there'll be one player who gets the neutralization of the C flag and says, we'll take the plus 24. We don't need the plus 36. We'll back away and just make sure that people think that I'm still in the area while we're still holding on to things like spawns. I think that what we saw after Minnesota, again, with those pro teams not having much practice on that domination mode, once they start to figure out exactly the right calls when it comes to certain scenarios, I think domination will be a very competitive and very fun map or mode style to watch. It's just going to be one of those things that's going to take a while, I think, for a lot of these CCL squads that, again, they aren't scrimming and rehearsing nearly as much as even amateur teams in the challengers division are, let alone the pro teams to right. figure out exactly how to play Dom and what is the best tactic available to you to make the game a little bit more exciting on this level. Uh, we will get at least a look at it here, though, again, early on post that patch with two hopefully solid teams going into it. That's right. And, you know, I think that we definitely do. We got to see some, you know, some things there uh, for as far as the first opening rounds there for the side of uh, GCU. It's just they weren't able to close out the later ones there. Things start to get a little bit too chaotic for them. But I think you're definitely right here. This is an opportunity for people to make solo plays um, for as far as being able to uh, take things into your own hands, go big, make those clutch plays. And I think that opens up for, you know, some big opportunities for the CCL uh, teams just for the simple reason you just said it. There's not a lot of practice that maybe they're having for as far as also right. balancing schoolwork, work lives, you know, um, everything else that comes along with being uh, just a, a regular university or college student. So um, it is definitely a very hectic lifestyle. And then putting in the time to practice a game mode where they do implement these these crazy changes, um, you know, you do have to think about that for as far as, you know, how much practice are they really putting in? How What are we, our, our expectations for as far as what they're going to bring to the table coming into domination? Well, I think we've seen a lot of fantastic sub plays, specifically just from the search and destroy there on the side of GCC that uh, I can almost guarantee you that people like impasta people like i um, mean just joker getting up in your face here is, is definitely going to be some of the key moments but either way we're on towards map number three here to see if it's going to be a hot 3-0 or if gcu esports will bounce back and force that game number four and again we've seen a lot of different instances of how do you want to play gunrunner domination you know a lot of people are still in the consideration that the a side is the better side because you can force the spawns essentially for GCU to be in the top right hand side of your mini map and you can kind of trap them back there or at least read where they're going to be coming off of the spawn but on the other foot you've got GCU from the C side of the map which 
has an easier way to fight it a be typically speaking that's until the ar presence which again we don't see a lot of ars coming out on domination period let alone on gunrunner simply because you want to win this mid map boiler and the area by bathrooms but the ar presence early here for grossmont looking solid as they do find the early capture of both the a and the b flag they do find it now it's just about holding it and locking down the setup this is typically where you see, we'll start to see a little bit of that chaos kick in towards domination these members trying to overextend but they are pushing in and they do actually open up with a couple of kills here to maybe give them some leeway on towards the flag marvin kinger though they answer back with a couple kills of their own trying to shut down the push as locking down that top area there is going to believe i believe that was actually fanatic or no fanatic runs on in gets a double now jokester finds a nade in the sub for himself here they're just flooding trying to get in towards this is neutralized at the moment so really it's just going to be those home flags just collecting points but finally gcu make their way on in towards this cool area and lock down the two cap and this is what i'm talking about from the c side of the map it's easier to get into boiler you've got safer lines of sight to contest the b flag from a distance you've got an easy nade spot where you can just toss it and even with a couple of players you can hold on to this B flag pretty consistently, but watch out for Impasta. He wins a 1v1 through bathroom, is now neutralizing the C flag and going for a small bit of capture. Fnatic needs to be the player to take him off, but realizes that, hey, Impasta's not actually capturing C anymore. Where has he gone to? We'll track him down. But again, the fact that, again, GCU only send one player to deal with it will keep them numbers over here. Bush not able to fully control the recoil. Not finding the long distance kill, but again, it's only a neutralization. Grand Canyon University is still holding on to two flags. Still holding on to two. Score fairly close at the moment here for us as we kind of just get ready to break in towards that second quarter here on our first side. Still desperately trying to get control of this royal area. Marv's going to try to entry in, but three quick kills come through for GCU. Make that four. Could it be the whole team wipe as his last member walks on up, but he is going to oh, wait big. for his team. It doesn't matter. That is the wipe there. And you can see it. This is where the spawn trap can also happen within A. They're getting the map pressure. They're getting towards these power positions, and things could be a looking a little bit grim here for Ghost Spawn unless they can break out of it. And this is, again, the positioning that GCU have put themselves in is absolutely mammoth. Waffles sitting right inside the minecarts can watch players come through boxes. You've got Xyphos on your screen watching to make sure nobody comes through the mid jump nor through the woods side of the map. And then as soon as they start losing numbers and pressure comes over to B, they just rotate back and keep the mid map in control so they can very easily contest the B flag. This is absolutely perfect for GCU. Xyphos will eventually get taken down, but again, he's got teammates here to come through and trade and all all of that is valuable for the antelopes now looking at a 10 point lead 10 point lead built up and now still trying to get middle map control right now is certainly going to be grossman here struggling but brian manages to find a close kill here with the m4a1 as he's trying to actually maybe look for that overextend towards c they have actually got a couple members over there they're going maybe for two flags at once trying to maybe flip some of these decisions of gcu esports for the time being shots go down I believe kinger picked up that one in the back there so that's going to maybe give them the opportunity to maybe get on towards the flag here for us reach out comes back out joker's going to be taken down and bush is locking down this site here it's gonna be very difficult brian looks to be the m4 player but he's just going to be flooded with grenades unable to get that position that is so very crucial kinger inside of boiler and they need to continue to hold this but it's just been a really good job of gcu esports so far of when they do get back into a corner they're just biting and pouncing back here and getting back to these power positions you called it absolutely properly, Austin. Grosbont sending a lot of players from A to C, but the problem was the two players that were responsible for contesting B did ne never went into the boiler room. So they were right. essentially full wrapping the north and south part of the maps, which allowed GCU just to sit mid-map and say, come on in, water's fine, and took care of them one by one by one. The respawns, again, favorable for GCU to reinforce. And unless Grossmont adjusts and puts some pressure mid-map, I don't see this next minute and 13 seconds changing at all. We're looking at a 33-point lead, essentially. Or pardon me, that's about a 30-point lead here for GCU as they're looking to finish off these last 60 seconds with the two flags that they currently have. That's right. They look to finish strong. I'll have to see if Grossmont can really do anything. They have a couple members here on the run to maybe finally break the setup that has been intact for so very long. The flank looks like it might just be the, the piece of the puzzle to really do it. Brian's locking down the boiler with the M4. Not maybe the person you would typically see in this area ritual looking to, to finish off this kill. And that's going to be a close battle. But he actually slides right through him, unfortunately. So he does not pick up that kill. Banana Crab's Mar. Brian holding the middle. But he, again, needs to get to these longer uh, lines of sight so that he can be more 
more effective with the weapon that he's wielding at the moment here. But still, 30 seconds left here for us. GCU Esports. They don't have the two cap at the moment, but they've held it the majority of the round here. And they will be sitting, going in towards that next side here with a very comfortable lead. And look what changed. Grossmont Community College, they put three members through the middle of the map to get control of Boiler. They flipped the B flag immediately afterwards, and they pulled the Boiler Room pipes area so they could hold the B flag. That is the key to success, is that Boiler Room bathroom green area, that little triangle of buildings mid-map. If you can control two of those, you're usually going to control the map, no problem. GCU absolutely exhibiting that and then of course late grossmont doing a nice job of at least coming back and making it relatively close after they spawned on again i won't say an unfavored or favored side of the map because this map is very evenly laid out uh but again looking at nearly a 40 point differential here as we go into it is really really tough i think if you're looking at this from the perspective of grossmont who will be on the seed side of the map this time through that's right. We'll have to see what the plan is. I imagine that they may have made those changes for as far as uh, playing in towards those areas that you were just mentioning, Shift. You certainly would expect them to, at least, if they want to have this maybe on control. Impasta gets himself on the flag very early on. He has a 1v1 that he might have to win against Bush, but instead someone flies out and I snap <laughs> there on towards him as he just drops them down immediately. Almost another win comes through. Actually, he did end up finding the kill, but he gets taken down there by Deb's Dubstep Waffles, oh. and it's going to be almost a three cap they have a flag neutralizers no points being picked up for gcu at the moment here shift and that whole play i don't know if you caught it or not but the mini map grossmont sent four players over towards b one player watches for the push through from the a side and after he realized hey no one's coming this way i'll just sneak my way up to the a flag they get themselves a natural spawn flip which i don't know if they necessarily wanted but grossmont put themselves on a near triple cap but what a response again for gcu they come through they contest the c flag they flip that one around some good contest as well the b flag not fully neutralizing it but again and good pressure and you take a look the purple arrow mid map in boiler pipes gcu doing a nice job of understanding what their win mechanic will look like when it comes to that b flag fanatic finds two kills he'll neutralize and start to flip the b flag on the back end of that play that's right just about 11 points is separate in these teams right now but still gc or gcu holding on towards this lead and pasta trying to get on towards this flag desperately is going to get a, a little bit of a tick in towards it here bush has been here this entire game just holding down the coal area has been doing a, a pretty great job of it so far 17 and 15 has been deleted for the time being brian holding his close quarter still wants to get up close with this m4 and again not something you typically see but he has been getting a good amount of work done here is at four positive at the moment now he's holding this left angle this is going to be the home flag that's really big as they look to try and get themselves on towards one of them and now that's going to be the majority of them down here for gross Mont. this is going to oh open boy. up for gcu to now again take control and look for multiple flags and again you don't care about the a flag here you got the flip of it great you come immediately back control mid map get the b flag but what they don't end up scouting out is the fact that grossman actually rotated through the woods with them and they've now neutralized the c flag again we don't see much of it but it is possible to hold the a and the c flag if you could control right around that mid map the green building the bathrooms and you get some players with ars watching long you can hold a and c for maybe a longer amount of time than you would currently expect but not going to be the case here as Grossmont have a little bit of a flip with the C flag, but again, GCU maintaining the B flag will eventually get their home flag back into their favor, and the grow the lead will continue to grow here as we're at about a 20-point differential going into the fourth quarter. Brian, currently on a two spree, is currently weak. Nice shots there from Bush, able to win that M4 battle as they've been doing it back and forth here again all around this area. But it's going to be the two cap for GCU yet again. So the pressure certainly on Grossman as we are now hitting about that fourth quarter of domination. Two minutes and 45 seconds left to be able to try and close this lead. And with 25 points sitting for GCU, if they can just hold this two cap here, they'll certainly be able to force this game number four. And again, you need to find a way you're from the A side of the map, you want this B control, you have to push through the staircase and you have to push through into the control room. And you saw an opportunity where Grossmont could have done that and they don't. So now all of a sudden off the respawn again, here come M4s and nades, no problem to at least again, neutralize and make sure that the point at B never goes into the side of Grossmont's favor. Marvel jump on, will find himself one kill and that'll be enough, but you have to push through here if you're GCC. You absolutely do. 
We're going to see Zavos, uh, maybe lost aim assist there in the stairs, but he's going to regroup with his teammates as they're going to grab a couple kills here and actually send Crossmont back towards the spawn. Just Joker looking to get this very important control around this boiler area is going to be inside of it for now and does actually connect with a kill. Ritual now looking to respond to actually shut that member down, but it's already been done here by Waffles. Fnatic also grabbing two, keeping Grossmont fairly pushed back here, not getting an opportunity to even get close towards the B flag here. It's calling for desperation with a minute 30 left. They're going to have to hold the three cap if they're going to yep. get themselves any kind of a win here to close up the series 3-0. Yeah, it's going to be at least a two with a neutralization. You can't just win it off a two one sided flip here for the flags. Bush able to take down two more again. GCU dominated the B flag and lost the solo play. Able to neutralize C, but it's short lived. Two players are gross up will come back. Or party for GCU will come back and try to repossess the C flag. Marv, though, will again contest once more. So you're getting the neutralization of C, which is fine. But once again, you've got nobody putting pressure on the B side whatsoever. Bush will line up two more. He's on five straight. And that's going to be likely enough to put this one away. It's about a 30-point differential with only 50 seconds left. And we're going to see a map four. Yeah, we are going to see a map four here, which is very exciting because we're going to be staying on the same exact map here. <laughs> so, Fnatic's going to let him know, or maybe just making sure that he's dead. Either way, this is definitely going to be a, a very exciting match for as far as game number four because this has got to be a momentum swing. You know, I love seeing teams when they go down 0-2, but they fight back in that game three. It just shows, you know, how much heart they have. Just keeping that cool mental um, is, is very crucial, especially within the team atmosphere here. And it looks like they have done it. They're going to be going on towards this map here with that swing in their favor and this is going to put just a bit of pressure on gross bond here i wouldn't count them out just yet they have looked solid at least coming off the search and destroy and winning map number one pretty convincingly but it looks like we got a series on our hands here shift yeah absolutely that was a much different look for gcu the first time and you know again we didn't get to see the hard point but that's the first time that gcu was dictating the pace pretty much all the way through 197 176 the final here and the gunrunner domination but if GCU can continue to dictate the pace, dictate the tempo, and especially now that we're staying here on Gunrunner, find a way to continue to win mid-map, uh, they're going to be in a spot where they very well could send this to a map five. I would not be surprised at all based on how they just positioned themselves and what their understanding of Gunrunner just looked like here in the Dom. Absolutely. Uh, you know, just just seeing, you know, how they were playing those those small areas within respawn that we put so much emphasis on. Um, I think we've now gotten to talk about it uh, for, you know, on Gunrunner now going in from week number one into week number two. So, you know, maybe yeah. it's starting to uh, get drilled into some of the people that are watching for as far as, you know, what you're supposed to execute on this map. And well, that was what was exactly done there uh, for the side of GCU as they just really looked completely clean. They're able to win a lot of their engagements, a lot of big plays too, you know, Know, to mention a lot of those players put up some big numbers uh for as far as bouncing back again oh, after yeah. uh, coming off of you know a couple of some rough a couple rough maps yeah i mean again the first two maps were not necessarily close i mean you're going to see it here 250 to 114 was the petro and, and that's not necessarily uncommon we don't sure. typically see a lot of close petro maps i feel like a lot of people are understanding that this is not a hard point map that we enjoy playing and if you don't practice it that's the result that you expect to see but then the gunrunner search and destroy was very scrappy and gcc able to string together four or five rounds in a row to clean that one up no problem uh but this one a much different look and if the grand kitty university and the antelopes can find a way to continue to dictate the pace and make sure they're finding themselves spawn control especially for like the munitions depot and the second hard point as well as the back warehouse in the fifth hard point it all comes down to how you rotate after that. And a lot of it is done through the middle of the map. So if they can keep finding success with SMG players in boiler bathrooms in green, I would not be surprised to see another pretty definitive win for GCU in map number four. That's right. But I do think that we could see that exact same pressure matched in the middle of the map here. But people like, um, you know, in, in Pasta, I think, are, are definitely one of the ones that's coming to mind for as far as that we're able to find a lot of those big plays uh, around those objectives for as far as that domination. But have to be able to bring that and maybe just a level more going in towards the hard point here. Because, um, you know, getting that swing in a series where you're down 0-2 and getting that map again, like it, it is really just such a momentum booster for as far as your team. The vibes start to get picked back up. You start to get a little bit more confidence within every 
everybody again. And, you know, everybody is just refreshed going in towards this one. And maybe we do have a yeah. chance at closing this out um, and getting it towards that map mm -hmm. five, which could be Ramaza and would be a, a very exciting search and destroy to, to end things off. But I don't want to get too far ahead of things as we do have to get through the hard point. And there's still a lot of execution that has to come through for these teams uh, if they're going to be able to, again, solidify the win or force the game number five. I was about to say, even if we get a forced game number five, I'm still on edge a little bit based on how GCU played the Gunrunner Search and Destroy. Ramaza is a map that is not at all as lenient when it comes to just running at your opponent. As soon as you lose that mid-map pressure, whether it be from the top of Cafe or by the Rug Shop, things go chaotically. It's hard to rotate from, from bomb to bomb. It's not nearly as much the case uh, on defense when you try to rotate from Gunrunner because typically you're always stacked mid-map and towards the B site with maybe only one other player watching towards A. So now that you, if, you, if we do get to that map five and you start to split your resources, can GCU find a way to stay controlled again? Maybe a bit premature as far as that conversation goes, but we're about ready to go here with the Gunrunner hardpoint. And I think we've already kind of hit on the big storylines as far as what do you want to see different? Um, you know, I, I guess we kind of hit it more from GCU standpoint, but for Grossmont, is there anyone or anything in particular looking for them to try to do here off the rip to make sure they kind of start this map into their favor? I think it's, um, you know, just playing um, just, just a little bit maybe closer together. I think there was a couple solo plays that were made and someone, you know, a lot of hero plays. And I think that's like a real hard instinct to actually um, come out of as a Call of Duty player. Um, you Everybody wants to have that pop-off moment on stream. I think like we also don't think about the fact that, you know, this is on stream and that there is a little bit added pressure and people do actually play different in front of viewers and in front of casters than they typically would within scrims or just playing within their own, um, like just within their own match if it wasn't casted. So you have to wonder if that play plays an effect but I think the biggest thing is just coming in with a strong mental I'd like to see them just play closer together because I think their AR player I think Bush was playing fantastic he controlled uh, most of the coal area there the majority of the time here and well that yeah. just you know has to be matched uh, for as far as you know the rest of the team making sure that they're backing that up pushing when the picks are coming through and again grabbing controls but you mentioned the, the very important things which is the rotations on a map like this and whoever gets towards those very uh, important hills like you said P2 and P5 are able to lock down a lot of points when and they have the effective setups in place. But we are here. Game number four is about to break off as we'll see if Rosemont are going to be able to close things out or if GCU can, in fact, force that game number five. Ryan, M4 will be looking over the top of this again for Grossmont. They're more interested in pushing through this crate side, influencing the spawns for P2. And so far, they're actually making some gains. Kinger will be the one to step onto the hill for now, but you kind of wish that M4 was pushing with that squad. Maybe you could find a couple more picks. It looks like there is pretty much an opening, at least for Joe, sort of work his way to the bathrooms. That's too early of a push, though. He needs to play his life a little bit longer before you make that happen. Brian and Kinger doing a fantastic job of finding the trade and getting the work done and kind of picking up the pieces there. And Grosnop will start to push through this P2 while also, how about this? They've already found 25 seconds worth of additional time. GCU will be spawning all over the north side of the mini-map. Some close, some far, all of it not good. And Grosnop will now sit and look at this last 20 seconds to potentially put themselves in a massive point where not only would they have the lead, but they're in control of the spawns currently for P2. That's right. They could actually uh, almost look at closing in on 100 points here uh, just off the second hill, which is crazy to even think about. But of course, they're going to have to hold that set up here in order to actually do that. And now we'll see what GCU intends to do. If there's any smokes on any of these players, definitely might be crucial for getting rid of some of these lines of sights. But doors are closed. Brian and King are in, as well as Jokester Marv, all of them winning Good with dream. all of their gunfights here. They're going to have to maybe slay through another rotation, but it is just a little bit of a difficult play. And now Marv actually connects with three and wow we were just seeing Rosemont just start to put on an absolute frenzy as anyone that challenges they are just mowing down Kinger's on seven straight and he's got the passive duty of just sitting up top watching any rotations in and making sure nobody hits from the A side of the map from the S and D point of view through that coal area and GCU again it's just missed timings of these execute calls we saw a couple of different instances Zyphos who found himself a kill in bathrooms. It was a 2v4, and he says, I'm going in, absolutely gets destroyed. The rest of his teammates are left reeling because they don't have the numbers, and, and that's not what you want to see from GCU. You want to see them execute together, hit on multiple fronts at the same time, but the points of contact have not been great so far for GCU, and you said it. Maybe we'll see 100 points after our first two hard points. We absolutely have 101 to 18, but GCU currently controlling our third hard point. 
They are controlling it, finally able to get a handle and uh, be able to have a setup. So they're going to have to see if they can hold it. 15 points at least has been collected. Jokester able to find Fnatic as he looks to break on in towards the hill. Smokes are going down. The push and the break now about to commence. Nice shots for Ritual. Good find a couple members here, but it's actually going to be Marv. King are able to take down three together, and now they have broken in. Only 30 yeah. seconds were able to be picked up here for GCU, and Grossman looked to collect the rest of this time here potentially. I just don't understand the play here from GCU. Waffles was kind of sitting by himself by that mid jump wall, contesting with an MP5 uphill through smoke. Just hit the boiler room, hit the pinch, because worst case scenario is if that doesn't work out, at least you're influenced in the middle of the map so your teammates can rotate behind you. Now you've got neither of those things happening. The pinch doesn't happen because he doesn't push it. Plus, now his teammates have to be rotating through woods, allowing Grossmont to slide into the hill number four for free. And now we're looking at a 110 point game early as Grossmont are not only controlling the initial time, but they're starting to work their way across the middle of the map. They are trying to get themselves in towards this area. Fnatic, unfortunately, hits Bush there as AR player with a nade. Waffles looks to make a little bit of a flank play here. This could be pretty massive. He has one lined up, has the second, but runs out of ammo. So Fnatic's able to turn and burn. And now that's just going to be at least another hold. Grosspawn are running away with the hard oh, point. And well, if we're seeing this hard point here from Grosspawn, maybe we didn't want to see that map number one here, Ship. Yeah, I, this is ugly, eh? it be to be completely candid. You know, not trying to throw shade, but now we've got three players for GCU trying to push up mid-map to take control. But, you know, again, there's nobody boiler. They finally put a player into the bottom of that green building, so maybe there's an opportunity to cut off some of this rotation. Beach is, Bush, rather, is going to be in a really good spot to hopefully win a fight, but Kinger will not die. He's 14 and 5. He was on a seven straight spree to start the game, looking just as solid here through the end of this first rotation of hills and a full green kill feed for Grossmont as they break way too easily. Way too easily. The setup on P5 is, you know, can be so hard and difficult to break. We've seen it. And now we're just seeing them just try to contest. They're desperately looking for any kind of points they can get. Marv is able to punch uh, Zephos there, able to take him down. He's looking to challenge back out here as he has his teammate with them. Nice Jeez. shots from him there. And they are just running away with it at the moment. He's 20 and 8 as he hits that 20 bomb here. And well, 210 to 43. Could very likely even keep them in that 50 point club as uh, we're going to get oh, that man. next rotation in the resets. And Impasta wins another big 1v1 in the bathroom. So now all of a sudden, copy-paste the initial off-the-rip strategy here for Grossmont. They can send two players from the south side of the map through the cargo containers into the back if they so choose. Zyphos will pinch up one player in the bathroom, so they'll hold for now. But again, Grossmont can win off this hill. They don't yes. necessarily have to go to P2. They can just win this after what is essentially one rotation of hard points. Fortunately, Waffles will take care of two players on the hill itself. Fnatic and Zyphos with two follow-up picks. So GCU will stabilize, but they're still hemorrhaging points at the moment. This is looking a bit rough. We could see the closeout, but now it seems like they might just get that setup going. But GCU have already got the favorable side, and now it looks like they're not going to be able to actually win off this. So we are going to be going towards another hill, and Grossmont are going to have to try and actually break this setup. But they haven't had a problem thus far here with GCU esports setups. Very likely might be the case here again, as from here on out, you basically have to play every single rotation, every single play uh, perfect. And we're already seeing at least Brian get cut down as he tries to get in towards the back. So we are on towards our P2 hill. The points are coming through, but it is still looking very grim. Ritual, what are you looking at? He's literally standing on top of the box, looking at the windows. He's done absolutely nothing. Now he's the last player left in the hill. He's gonna clean up four players in front. He won't even fire. Oh, he will take down two. Let's say Marvin almost popped on him. And fortunately he holds, but my goodness, Ritual wasn't watching anything and his teammates got absolutely decimated, not necessarily because of it, but it definitely made life more difficult. Grossmont, one more maybe could hit, maybe break this and win the game. It's going to be back and forth, mostly favoring GCU. And with that, Grossmont will just back up and try to win the game on P3. Yeah, they're just going to make the rotation here. We are seeing a little bit of fight from GCU, but it is definitely a little bit late in towards our game number four. Bush looks to try and find some of these entry kills, but he is just immediately cut down by the submachine gun there of Ritual. 
And now our Brian, excuse me, as we'll see what he can do. And Pasta able to find a nice little slide there and takes him down. Big 1v1 win for him as he's going to control this boiler area. And well, GCUR trying to flood here from multiple different angles, but only 10 more points need to come through for Gross Spawn. One more member than Cole and Pasta is there. The pistol oh! is out. He oh! finds another one. You know he's feeling good after that. GCU do get themselves on the hill for now. So they are going to extend this a bit longer, but I don't know if it's going to be towards that next hill or not. Ritual has to pop off for his teammates here. I love this play, though, for Waffles. He's going to be watching things from the mid-jump petty, able to walk down that pinch rotation. And that is a good hill break for GCU, 244, 120. But now you have to send somebody to P4. It's got to be this player that's going to be pushing through the vent. You have to trust that your teammates are going to win their gunfights with the, the, pardon me, the superior positions and get on your high horse. Work this mid-rotation. Get there. Make sure you can stop this from being early time for Grossbot. GCU, Zyphos, the one player who's here. He's got to do it all by himself. He's already tagged up pretty hard. Brian's on the hill, also tagged through. Trades back and forth, looking for Zyphos to clean up one. He will do it, and GCU will survive for now. But again, they're not going to, be able to contest much besides just from in the hill itself. So you have to win your gunfights right now. Yeah, you have to win every gunfight, because this is actually a really difficult hill to, to fully hold here. Kinger is going to now entry with a couple kills. The pistol <laughs> and Andy finds three. He just needs a couple more. No! He finds another one as Kinger takes down four and will close out the map here for his team. Things were looking maybe a little bit scary, but I still feel like Grossmont knew they had it in the bag. They needed a couple more points. Kinger ends up finding the kill cam. Pistol in hand. Nice shot. <laughs> Picks up the quad and ends the game here for Grossmont. That's dirty, Kinger. Have yourself a day. He goes 26 and 17. Again, he started that map absolutely on fire. Seven straight. It was at, I think, a 1.15 and three. So definitely slowed down at one point in time. But that is the definition of the Fuego from Kinger to finish off the map. And GCC will definitively take map for 250, 157. And again, just too many questionable moments. I think just across the board for all of our sets today, not just in this one, but GCU just, again, you got to figure out what you're doing. I think flat out at the end of the day, there were too many opportunities that were just missed on rotations. What are we watching? What are we setting up? Definitely need to spend some time looking at an overhead map and just drawing on it to figure out how exactly we want to set up our positions because too many angles we're giving up for free. Too many early and early easy breaks for GCC. Yeah, you said it. The setups was the main problem. They were broken way too e easily. It seems like multiple members were watching the same thing. They weren't, yeah. um, you know, stacking members to the most important areas that are commonly um, the breakthroughs for the for the opposing team. So uh, definitely have a lot to work on. But that's why they got VODs and that's why they got you shift there. They were able to kind of point out a lot of the problems within the setups there. And uh, for as far as being able to, to figure things out, going forward in towards the future weeks but either way that's uh, definitely got to be feeling really good right there for uh, GCC as they have been looking very dominant now and able to close this one out of course 3-1 putting themselves even farther in towards the standings there now I believe that they are now flawless at 2-0 and oh, overall map count I believe being 6-1 and one. so I'm um, overall having a pretty strong performance in going in towards week 2 so we will keep track of them as we proceed forward but I believe that's going to do it here for the College College of duty stream we had some fantastic matches tonight we hope you guys enjoyed it again if you're not following the stream make sure you you do follow the stream in the top right hand corner go towards twitter if you're not already following college cause so that you can stay up to date for with any information or any announcements that will be coming out the discord as well links below all of those great things make sure you're doing that if you're not already however this was visions as well as shift thank you guys so much for tuning in we'll see you guys for college call of duty on thursday